Hi, I'm E.D. Lewis, and welcome back to my channel, E.D. Lewis Reviews, the new E.D. Lewis Reviews, and it's a new year, so um, if you haven't already, uh, please go down and hit that like and that subscribe button and that little bell so you'll get notifications on my uh, latest videos, and if you've never been here before, welcome to the channel. Um, we're going to have some fun in this uh, new year of 2022. We're going to do some new things, and uh, we're going to do some old things, and we're going to just kind of play around with the channel, I think, this year a little bit. Not too much, just a little bit. Um, so this is uh, my um, December wrap-up. Um, I don't do wrap-ups very often. I don't do them every month, but... I thought this would be a good one to start the year out with, the calendar year. So, we're going to get started. Alright, so what I read in December. There's a little bit of horror, there's a little bit of gothic romance, there's a little bit of uh, regular romance, a little bit of funny books, and there's also a little bit of erotica and some fantasy. Um, some of these I have, well, one of these I have reviewed um, a couple of these I'm planning on reviewing, one I'm debating about, and one of them, um, um, a couple of them, sorry, I'm not, s I'm definitely not going to review, sorry. Um, I had to think about that one. So, first off is, uh, I wrote down my list wrong, because I wrote it down in a hurry, I'm like, what did I read? I had to go on my Goodreads. Um, <laughs> My first uh, one was actually a book I finished, uh, I started a novella, by the way. I actually started in November, and I finished it right after the start of December. And I, my review's already up for it. I'll put it down below in the description. It is Snowblind by R. St. Clair, or Regina, Regina's Haunted Library. Um, this was an excellent novella. I thought it was great for the season. It had that Christmassy uhness to it but not too much and it didn't you know throw Christmas stuff at you so much like a lot of Christmas books do um oh yeah I just remembered there's another one I need to add to my list but we'll get to that that'll be the last one and I'll tell you why it's last and I can't remember the author off the top of my head so um um but I remember what it's called, so I'm sorry. I won't say the, I won't say the author's name in here, but um, I, you know, we'll get to that when we get there. Um, uh, anyway, I thought it was a great book. Um, we're talking about Snowblind, by the way, by R. St. Clair, and I highly recommend you check out. I'm not going to talk about it so much because I've already reviewed it, so do check out my review. And um, it's not too late to read it. I mean. It's winter. It takes place in winter. There's snow. There's cryptids. There's uh, um, plots, conspiracy, and that's um, all I'm going to tell you. So do check out um, our St. Clair's Snowblind. Next up is, um, I listened to this on Audible because I don't have the book, and a lot of these books are hard to find. The, the gothic romances from uh, the 1960s and stuff. And it's Mistress of Ravenswood by Marilyn Ross. I am planning on doing a review on this one at some point. I'm not sure when. But it's about a, um, sorry, I'm in my head right now. It's about a governess who, um, takes a, she's fired from her old position and she takes up a new position and then all, uh, elsewhere and all these strange and unfortunate things are happening to her typical gothic romance. There's more detail to it, and I will do a review on this later, so that's why I'm not saying so much on it. I think it was one of Marilyn Ross's first gothic novels to write. So, um, it's not one I was particularly fond of the first time I listened to it. I've actually listened to it, I think, at least three times now, um, since I got it. And, uh, it, it's growing on me. It's much better now than I thought the first time. Around, but I'll talk more about that in another video. Next up was The Christmas Pact, which I first had listened to in 2020. It was originally just an Audible original. It was only available in audiobook. You uh, could not get even a Kindle edition. Now there is a Kindle edition. I didn't know this till after I listened to it uh, for the second time now. Um, oh, by the way, it's called The Christmas Pact by 
is it V or Vi? I think it's Vi Keeland. And um, it's really good. And it's read by two different performers, a male and a female, one reading the, the male's point of view and one reading the female's point of view. And it was very good. Uh, it's very funny. It I could see it being a Hallmark movie, except for they'd have to get rid of the swearing and the inappropriate references. Um, rather than that, I could honestly see it uh, being a Hallmark. So, it's like the Hallmark version, but, you know, a little more adult. It's like a, a little more adult version of a Hallmark Holly film. Um, next up, I had started this actually back in uh, November, maybe even around Halloween. I'm not sure, but it was kind of a long one. It was uh, Frankenstein, the prodigal, uh, Frankenstein, prodigal son, not the, by Dean Coots. It was the first, it's the first in his Frankenstein series. Um, I will be doing a review on this. It'll be on my Frankenstein review series. And it was something different for me. It wasn't what I would typically read, but that wasn't bad. I, I did enjoy it. Um, and unfortunately, it does kind of leave you hanging. It's kind of on a cliffhanger. Of course, there's a whole series, so um, I'll definitely have to delve more into the series at a later time. Maybe throughout the year, so I don't know. Next up... Um, the Christmas Pact, by the way, was the first one I wasn't, I'm not going to do a review on. And then this one, the best, uh, this one's erotica, by the way. So, um, yeah, it's called The Best Friend Bro Job. It's by D.J. Uh, Kennedy. It's part of a series. It's of uh, straight to gay first time M.M. short erotica. <laughs> and um, I think I got this one for either free and 99 cents. It was on my BookBub deals, and I was like, oh, I'll try it out. Um, I didn't care for it at first. I did like it by the time of the, uh, there was a little twist in it, and, after, and what followed after the twist, I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm liking this now. Um, it was a little spicy, so it's it's not for everyone. It's only if you like erotica, and um, yeah, so. Um, I honestly don't remember what I gave for Star Reigns for most of these, except for Snowblind, but um, that's in my, I think that's in my review, I mentioned how much I put in there, uh, how many uh, stars I gave. But this one, I, I do remember, and I recently had finished reading it, um, I mean, I recently finished reading several of the, you know, several of these. Some of these, it was earlier in the month, and some of these were, you know, within the past few weeks or past week. Um, I rated this one as a three star, so. Uh, Next up is a fantasy book, and it's a children's fantasy. It's unfortunate that I put it next to the one I just talked about, though. But anyway, it's uh, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. This one I'm debating. Should I do a review on uh, the, you know, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis, or should I not? I might, I might not, but if anybody w would like me to... Uh, or would like to specify, go ahead and, you know, please say so in the comments. I may still do it either way. I'm just curious if anybody would be interested in me doing uh, a review on The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. But um, if you haven't read it, I think it's um, a piece of literature that anybody can read, really. You don't have to be a child. And if you saw the original, the movie uh, from Disney and Walden Media, it was a fantastic uh, production. Um... It's just a fun, uh, family-friendly fantasy story, and it does have some uh, Christian undertones to it and stuff. But it's just interesting because you see creatures like fawns and talking animals, and um, which a lot of things I, I'm not interested if there's talking animals. But Narnia is a little different. Um, and there's magical lands, and there's an evil witch, and... There's, um, it's surprisingly bloody for a children's novel. Of course, it was written in, like, the 1950s, I think. So, I mean, I don't know, it, it just seems rather shocking that, um, there be something so bloody in a children's novel. But, um, it's about four children who, uh, are sent out during the war, during World War Two, and they... Um, take up residency at this old mansion where um, they discover a gateway to a magical world. And so that's my kind of brief synopsis for it. So.
I just finished that and I did um, four stars on that. So, um, Lastly, I don't remember the author's name. I think the first name is Amy on it and I'm so sorry. I didn't, I completely forgot about it because it wasn't one I completed. I may complete this one later, maybe in July, you know, with Christmas in July. It was a Christmas book, by the way, and it's the first in a series. Don't think I'll pick up the rest of the series, though, but, you know, who knows. Um, I've DNF'd it for now, but I may pick it back up later, and it's called uh, A Very Berry Christmas Cruise. It's a shifter romance novel, um, and it features a witch and a weir bear. And other uh, witches and uh, weird uh, creatures as well. I had some issues with the book. Um, it was funny. Uh, and it did get kind of spicy. And um, it was kind of witty at times too. But it just kind of threw the world at you. It's just like you were already supposed to know, oh, this is what's going on in, in the world of the story. Okay. So, um, it's not like the True Blood books or Sookie Stackhouse books where they kind of give you know, kind of an explanation and then as things come up, they kind of explain that too. So they give you background. Or the Anita Blake books, back when I read those, um, where they give you explanation. There's no explanation here, really. There's little bits and pieces, but not enough. It's just, it just kind of is thrown at you and I just, I wasn't the only one that had this problem because I looked at some reviews while I was reading it. And I'm like, okay, I'm not alone. That makes me feel better. So, anyway, that is uh, what I read and DNF'd uh, during the month of December. Uh, who knows, it may not be an official DNF. I may pick it back up perhaps in July. So, we'll see. It might have been just me. I just wasn't feeling that one, but anyway. So I hope everybody had a great New Year's, and I hope everybody's going to have a great year this year and a great month, and um, make sure to stay warm and to uh, enjoy what you're reading, and I'll see you next time right here on ED Lewis Reviews. Bye-bye.